do you have an insight into any other uh, supplements? There's no no shortage of of supplements that are out there that that are touted as sort of you know longevity boosting agents and mitochondrial health agents. So so the most talked about of all of these, I think, is the precursors to NAD. So the most common of these would be NR uh, or NMN, yeah. both of which are uh, pretty clear that they are precursors to NAD. There's certainly some debate about how clinically relevant it is. Do you have a point of view on whether or not taking a supplement that boosts uh, NAD, at least in the plasma, I don't, I still don't know how well it's boosting NAD in the cell, but yeah. um, nevertheless, do you, do you have a sense of if that is beneficial to the mitochondria, um, both theoretically, but more importantly, experimentally? Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's a great point, and this is like I, I don't think we have the answer, but I think we need to be cautious about how we we interpret this data. Um, um, it's definitely been shown multiple times that um, NAD levels and at the cellular level are and even mitochondrial level are decreased with aging, right? Therefore, the whole thing, whoa, if it's low, let's take it, right? But it's not only NAD. Um, I mean, if you look at so many metabolites. You know, in at the cellular level and mitochondrial level, they're downregulated with aging, right? The question is, why are they, they, they are they downregulated? Uh, is is because mitochondria per se to start off with is downregulated, so it doesn't need so much NAD because cannot take it, right? Or other supplements or other metabolites, right? So this is this is at least how I think of um, um, NAD. It's as as we mentioned earlier, it's very important in glycolysis. It's uh, in redox st status, right? To maintain redox, and it's very important in the uh, in 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 uh, glycerol three phosphate to to three biphosphoglycerate phosphate, where NAD is utilized uh, to convert um, uh, glycerol three phosphate to two three phosphoglycerate, uh, but it's depleted, and this is why the only thing that rescues that is lactate, right? As we mentioned, now taking NAD is that going to increase longevity? I don't think so. That's my opinion, because longevity is not just one supplement or two or three or four or five. It's a compendium on, on an incredible amount of things that happen at the cellular level. And I don't think that one supplement. I remember those days where resveratrol was the thing, right, for longevity. And everybody was, not everybody, a lot of people were buying resveratrol. And there are studies with mice showing that increased 50% longevity in mice, so therefore let's do it in humans. Well, as you probably know, a lot of people started taking resveratrol when they were 50 and they're dead now. You know, uh, it didn't increase, it doesn't increase longevity in humans, right? Yeah. I mean, and I think, you know, I think the data in the, in the mice, we can debate the merits of that. I, yeah. I want to ask you about a theoretical risk though. You, yeah. you kind of alluded to it. Isn't there a scenario under which too much NAD could be harmful? If you had an existing, if you took, I don't know if this study has been done, but if you took cancer patients or patients who had tumors that were undiagnosed and gave them, if you boost, if you doubled their NAD levels, wouldn't you actually favor the tumor's metabolism? Well, in fact, we have done that pilot study with mice. Um, so the whole thing is like looking at, and my area of research in cancer is cancer metabolism, right? Yeah. And we know that glycolysis is key for, for cancer. Uh, and, and NAD is absolutely indispensable to feed that glycolysis, as I mean, as we have mentioned, alluded a few times, right? So the question is, like, as you say, would, would NAD increase that glycolytic rate or glycolytic flux, therefore would be favoring more a, a, a cancer phenotype? Uh, um, so what we did, uh, we haven't published that, it's a pilot study, which is, we're curious about it, and we had few mice, we have uh, an N of eight mice, four and four. So what we did is we transfected um, uh, tumors. We have uh, triple negative breast cancer. It's very aggressive and it grows very, very fast. And uh, um, uh, so one group, uh, uh, we give them just water. And the other group, uh, we give them a, a nico a nicotinamide uh, uh, ribocyte, which is the NAD precursor. Because NAD, obviously, as you know, you cannot take it. You need to take the precursor. And we observed the tumor growth over 23 days. Um, after that, the IRB at the university, um, because you cannot have animals 
uh, with with uh, with high tumors, right? So it was a flank tumor, and you need to um, uh, harvest them. So uh, after and we were measuring, you know, uh, every five days the tumor growth, and we saw in these animals uh, um, that there was about fifteen percent increase in tumor growth in the NAD group. So uh, again, I, I, and, and you you saw that difference with only four mice in each group. Yes, it's four and four, but 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 all consistent. You know, we had statistical significance, even with a small four. I mean, there was no cross results. All the four mice they grew cancer uh, at a higher rate than uh, in the NAD than in the control group. Again, that's where like obviously this is not like a publishable. Uh, because yeah. we need a more. Is is that uh, a study you, you you you'll you'll repeat at at a sufficiently powered uh, size? I would love to, and this this is why we just did this pilot study. We had because we have many mice, and say, hey, let's 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 give it a shot, and let's see because there's a lot of hype of NAD, and and and, and we saw this, so we would love to 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 do it at a much higher level. Because my question, which might be a, a disruptive question, is like as you know. What if you have a, a small tumor that you're not aware of, like in, in the pancreas or in the colon or in the lung? Could NAD over time, day after day after day, could favor that glycolytic flux to that tumor and, and, and increase the growth? This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.